Good day and greetings from the Great White North. My name is Prickly Pooh and welcome to day 169 of a year of change and the beginning of week 25 as well. So we're getting very, very, very close to our halfway point. But starting up a new week, um, last week we started in by, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago by looking at our fat intake. And then last week, just trying to get to that point where we're around 30% for our fat intake. Um, so today we're going to start looking a little bit deeper. Um, over the next few weeks, we're going to be going through and uh, picking out, well, next two weeks, picking out like good fats and bad fats because we've always heard that, that, well, these are healthy ones. They fix your cholesterol, even though there's two different kinds of cholesterol, which we won't get into today. Um, but you've heard like saturated and unsaturated and polysaturated and omegas, and that's what we're going to fiddle around with today. So we're going to science the shit out of this stuff today. Lots and lots of information. Um... The, we're going to keep things very simple because there's a lot of stuff that you're going to say, well, I, like when I was trying to find this and I was trying to figure out which is the good, which is the bad and everything else. Um, last week when we put, I put some links in there, it sort of briefly described it. Um, and that's pretty much what we're going to be going on now. Um, but there's a lot of the chemical aspect of it that we really don't need to know. Like the, we'll, we'll start with the good ones for this week. We'll save the bad ones for later because... The, the healthy fats, I guess probably a better way is, well, good fats and bad fats and all the other stuff, but um, the good ones are the ones that we can actually increase the amount that we're eating there um, because the, they're healthier than the bad ones. <laughs> um, there's Just like we did last week, there's no way that we really should be cutting out all fat because it's not healthy for us. We need to keep things balanced, and the 30% mark is pretty good. So where we should be. But the key is to increase the amount of healthy ones and decrease the amount of unhealthy ones, but still keep it at that 30%. So that's what we're going to start with. There's a number of different ones that you're going to hear. The main ones that we're going to talk about are um, the healthy ones, which are pretty much called unsaturated fats. Um, that comes from a chemical designation. It's the same thing with the, well, actually, we'll start with the unsaturated ones. <laughs> um Basically, what all that that describes is um, something with a double bond in the chemical makeup. So, when two chemicals, we'll use water, even though it doesn't have one, but we'll use water just for ease. H two O, because everyone knows it. There's two hydrogen and an oxygen, and those have a chemical bond. So, when you're looking at fats, they have the same chemical bonds. It's just a series of different elements all linked in together, but. On, on one section of it, it will have a double bond. It will have, instead of just having one little thing connecting them, it has two of them. When it does that, it gets rid of a hydrogen atom. So that's what a, a, that's an unsaturated fat is because it's unsaturated with hydrogen. If it didn't have that, if it didn't have any double bonds, and it would have as many hydrogen atoms as it could hold, that's where you get the saturated ones. So there you go. Very basic stuff. So when you have one that just has the one double bond, that's your monounsaturated. When you have more than one, you have a polyunsaturated. And there we go. That's the extent of what we're going to do for chemistry. So that's just to give you an idea. That's why, just to clarify, if nothing else, that it has nothing to do with your diet. <laughs> it's just that's how it's made up chemically when you're trying to figure stuff out. So these are the ones that we want to really focus on are the unsaturated fats these are the ones that are better for us our body can use they have fewer calories in them um but it still pretty much creates the same function as a saturated fat would so that's the one that we're going to be looking at today because i figure it's good to start with the good stuff because we can increase those and it's not going to be too too bad so hopefully as you've been going through um the past week your fat level is around 30 percent of your diet Okay, we aren't going to worry where the fats are coming from yet. That's what this week is about. So this week, what we're going to try to do is to focus more on the unsaturated ones. And the easiest way to figure out which ones are which, unsaturated fats, there's two main things that you can sort of go. It's, these obviously don't apply to everything, but it's the best way to do it, sort of a rule of thumb. If you want to use a wife-beating term, that's where that comes from, by the way. Look it up. It's horrible, but that's where we still we still use it. Um Unsaturated fats are primarily from plants, so like plant oils, like canola oil, corn oil, um, nuts, seeds, like sunflower seeds and walnuts and stuff like that. Um, they're mainly plant-based, and they're usually a liquid 
if they're at room temperature. So that's where you get stuff like olive oil. When you cook with that, it's healthier than cooking with butter or margarine. Because the butter or margarine, when normally at room temperature, it's a solid. That's your saturated fat. And that's where that comes in when they do the trans fat. They take an unsaturated fat and they pump in a bunch of uh, hydrogen atoms so that they add those in there, trying to create them as saturated fat so that they stay solid, but it creates a whole bunch of other shit to go along with it. And that's where you get trans fat, which are on their way out anyway. Um, the main reason why they do that, though, po uh, bleh, polyunsaturated, um, the unsaturated fats, like the plant-based ones, they spoil fairly quickly. Um when you have a solid, it seems to last a lot longer. But in general, that's where these come from. They, so you're looking for things like olive oil, um, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, and a bunch of other stuff. Primarily plant-based stuff. Um, there is a little, we're going to do a little thing later on about fish as well. But we're going to focus on those. So I'm going to look at my cheat sheet here just to make sure I have everything. Uh, yeah. We have it. We're, we seem to be good. <clears throat> so, um, anyway, yes, unsaturated fats. These are the ones that should be making up around 10% of your diet. Not 10% of all the fats you eat, just 10%. So out of that 30%, try to aim for at least 10% of it. Um, there are some studies that show that even if you go as high as 15%, it's even better for you because that 15% will take away from the saturated fats that we eat. Um, so it'll, it, there's a bunch of different things that it does along with the cholesterol, which we won't get into yet because I haven't really, I don't understand it myself, so I can't very well explain it to you. But there are two different types of cholesterol. One is good, one is bad. This one lowers the bad and increases the good. So I guess it's how it transports all the bad stuff out. Anyway, so, um, you're mainly looking for plant-based. Now there's saturated fats in plant stuff as well, but... The unsaturated fat, that's where you're going to get stuff like this. So the fat that's in an avocado, for example, um, that's primarily going to be unsaturated, and you should be fine that way. Um, cooking oils, even corn oil, which really sort of surprised me. For some reason in my head, I seem to think that corn oil is really bad, but it's one of the unsaturated fats that you can do. Um, any vegetable oil, like canola oil, um, which isn't as good as the olive oil or anything, but um, it the same thing. It's it's still a fat that is beneficial, and if you're cooking with something, it's better to cook with that than it is with butter or margarine. <coughs> um, sorry for that coffee hecky thingy. So, some of the other stuff. Uh, the mono unsaturated ones. These are the ones with just the one bond, which doesn't really matter. That's where you have your nuts and seeds, olive oils, um, almonds, pecans, stuff like that. So, you know, that's a good. Those are good things. You can snack on those. You can cook with olive oil. I find with olive oil, um, that's primarily what I cook with, that you can get, a, well, yeah, you can. There's like three or four different kinds. There's a range of different oils that you can get. There are some that taste really, really strongly, um, like olive oil. Um, but if you're not a big fan of olives, and we've talked about this before as well, then you can get other olive oils that just really have almost no flavor to them whatsoever, but they're still healthier. Um, always check the back of the container as well, just to make sure, you know, you can, now that you know what the difference is, you're looking for the unsaturated fats, whether it says monounsaturated or polyunsaturated, it doesn't matter. Um, just as long as you can look at that and compare it with what you normally cook with, that's going to be beneficial. If you're really just dead set against never having uh, olive oil, um, you can try, there are different, any oil like from a plant or a seed like you can get sunflower oil i don't know how that tastes i've never cooked with it um safflower and rapeseed oil and peanut oil as long as you're not allergic and you won't die but you can get peanut oil that um they take out the allergens so even if you're allergic to peanuts you can cook with some sorts of or some types of peanut oil and it should be okay so there you go if you like peanuts but it'll kill you you can still cook with peanut oil um it's just, it's a little easier, and I understand that like, there's sometimes you just, you want to cook with the oil, but you want to throw in a little bit of butter or something in there for some flavor, which is still fine. We aren't going to cut out the bad fats. And in fact, you can't cut out the bad fats because that actually can cause more problems or just as many problems as eating too many bad fats. But we'll get to that next week. We're concentrating on the good stuff this week. The main reason why I want to do the good stuff first is so that you can start increasing these in your diet and maybe replacing some of the stuff that if you think, okay, well, you know what, I'm going to 
do without the butter or the margarine, um, instead of using that every single time I cook, then I'll use olive oil. Not necessarily to replace it on toast or something, but just the little practical things that we did last week, like cutting extra fat off of meat and stuff like that, um, or, you know, putting, not buying low-fat fuff. Fuff? That's not even a word. Fuff. Not buying low-fat stuff, um, but just the little practical things that you can do to make those little tweaks, and this is one of them, that, you know, when you're cooking something up, um, like a stir-fry or something, or whatever it is that you're cooking, um, I use it with pretty much everything, because the good thing with olive oil, too, is that it doesn't really burn. Um, I mean, you have to have your heat way, 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 way up in order for it to burn. Um, with butter and margarine, it tends to turn to burn and turn brown very quickly. The olive oil, you would never even know, unless you have it way up and then it starts to smoke. But yeah, if it's up there, then that's a little too high. But it's really, really good for cooking. So that's what I use. There is actually, believe it or not, there's a real problem with counterfeit olive oil. I know this sounds weird, but I read about this a long time ago. Um, and it's one of those things that you just, you would never think of, but apparently it's much cheaper just to have really shitty, cheap, like canola oil or corn oil or something, and then put in a little bit of olive oil and then they can still call it olive oil. Um, I don't think it's too much of a problem where I am, but just having the idea of counterfeit oil, because you think, would it not just be easier to, apparently it's much easier to get it from different sources. Um... So whatever brand you decide to, to look at, just make sure it's not fake oil, I guess. I don't even know how they would start to do it, but it is apparently a multi-million dollar industry um, that just this counterfeit oil. So they, I don't know if they steal it and then rebottle it or whatever they do, but it's an interesting thing. You can look that up. I might put a little link in below as well. I'll try to find one and try to see if I can put a link in there just so that you have it, just because it's weird. Um, so anyway, cooking oils and stuff like that, that's primarily probably where we're going to be looking at um, getting our sources that way. Um, the mono unsaturated ones, I have to look at my cheat sheet again, are... where'd they go? Oh, that is mono. Okay, polyunsaturated. There we go. Um, that's when you get things like sunflower seeds and corn oil and walnuts. So basically, plants, nuts, seeds, cooking oils, all that stuff, those are your unsaturated. Those are the healthy ones. Now, there is another source. Um, the, is a little bit different. You probably have heard of it. Everyone you'll hear say omega threes, ooh, omega three fatty acids and everything else. That's any fat is like there are fatty. These are fatty acids as well, um, but it's still fat. Now the reason why the omega thing comes in there, it's not like it's again a chemical thing. Um, it's just its position where the double bond is. That's all it is. So omega three is like the third carbon atom or whatever it is. Um, it's in the third position. There's omega-6 and everything else. Now, the difference with the omega-3 fatty acids, and that's all that we really need to know about it. It's just to confuse us more. It's still an unsaturated fat, so you're still okay. <clears throat> it's still a healthy fat. With those, um, unlike the other ones, our body can't produce it. Um, your body produces a lot of different stuff. It can't, gen it can't create those fatty acids, but we still need them. So they have to come from a food source. There's no way around it. Um, and for a lot of us, the easiest way to do that is fish. And that's probably not a surprise because you probably hear that all the time. Um, that's another healthy fat that the majority of unsaturated fats come from plant food um, or plant products like seeds and nuts and stuff like that. But fish is really high in it as well. So, um, and I don't think it really matters what type either. It's just that that's where your source would come from. So you have um, like salmon, um, whitefish, and other fish, and the other other fish. Anyway, um, I probably should have listed a bunch of a bunch of other ones, but I just I didn't prepare. So those are the three main things. But overall, what you need to look at is okay. We know fish is healthy. It's not really you don't consider it to be fatty. Um, it's still going to have some fat in there, but that's okay. That's the healthy kind. That's where you get your omega threes is from fish. The other sources, I have it as well. Uh, walnuts have them as well. So you're still getting it from nuts and seeds and stuff like that. So, But fish is by far the best, I think. So um, looking at fish and uh, vegetables and nuts and seeds and cooking oils, those are the beneficial fats. Those are ones you don't need to worry about. So if you already cook with olive oil and things like that, keep it up. If you eat fish a couple times a week, keep it up. You're going to be up, you're going to be just fine. 
Um, so you can increase the amount that you're using um, with these things. And aside from the calories that are going to be coming from it, you're not going to need to worry. Um, for what we're doing. Obviously, if you are looking for more information, go talk to a doctor or a dietitian, a real one. Um, but for what we're doing, it serves our purposes to say that with these, you don't need to worry about going, okay, how much fat is in this? How much fat is in that? Because if it's plant-based, basically, if it's plant-based or fish-based or what was the other one? Plants and fish and yeah, seeds and nuts and stuff like that, you're going to be okay. Then... Those ones, you, I mean, you can still look at the nutrition label just to make sure that it's where it make sure it says what it is or it is what it says. And make sure it's not counterfeit, counterfeit pecans, pecans, however you pronounce it. Um, those ones, we're going to be okay. You can have those in your diet and it's not going to bother, it's not going to cause any problems, not going to bother anybody. <laughs> anyway. Um, so those are the main things that we want to focus on this week. So just so that you're aware of that, next week we're going to look at some of the bad ones. Um, which are, I mean, just for lack of a better term, uh, which is basically animal stuff. I'm not going vegan. I'm not trying to tout vegetarianism or anything. It's just that's where the saturated ones come from. And we'll talk about the saturated fats and the trans fats, which are really, really bad. But in three years' time, they should be outlawed. So we should be okay. But those are the main things. I'm going to put a link down below. Um, it's just going to be a quick little graphic. It's actually sort of, um, it was a link on the original page from last week from Harvard Health. Um, I had two or three different links in there as well, just so you can get a rough idea as to the different types of fats and things like that. But this is actually is a quick little graph. It's going to show you the beneficial fats and then the not so beneficial fats, where you can get them, different sources and stuff like that, just to give you a rough idea. It's obviously not an exhaustive list. But it's something that you can look at and say, okay, good. You know, I'm, you know, I allergic to peanuts, but I can eat these, so I can have that. Um, I do enjoy this type of fish, so I'll go and I'll buy more of that instead of eating pork chops all the time, like I did last week. Um, so overall, it's good. I mean, it's just going to give you a quick little snapshot of the good and the bad. So that's what we're focusing on this week. How far are we going? Oh, okay, we're not too bad. Um, anyway, that's just a little bit of information. So those are the sources that we're going to try to get more of. Um, so if you decide that you're going to get something that you want, something salty and snacky, although we're still trying to avoid really high sodium stuff, we know it's going to come. If you get to a point like I did and you think, no, I need something salty um, and the pickles aren't doing it, you want something crunchy and you want something salty, then grab a handful of almonds or walnuts or just the deluxe mixed nuts you can get because... Mixed nuts are generally just like 90% peanut, which is fine, but we aren't ever buying them for the peanuts. So spend your money. Get the deluxe mixed nuts where you have a whole bunch of radioactive Brazil nuts and un mono, mono poly? Which one is it? For the pecans are mono and walnuts are poly. So there we go. And then we'll get, So that way you can say, no, I'm buying this for health reasons. And you'll be fine. So little things like that, when you know you're at that breaking point, now at least we have a little bit more ammunition so that it's not just a matter of saying, okay, well, I'm going to buy this. Then you can say, okay, I still can get the salty, gooey, greasy, not good for me at all snack, but at least it's not as bad as it could be. So, and that's what we've been doing for the past six months almost. Oh, man, the end of next week will be our halfway point, which will be really, really weird. So um, this week, by the way, I forgot to start things off. Do our weigh-in, as per usual. Um, weigh yourself three times. Take the highest number, which I did this morning. And I've actually... I am I think I'm done my plateau. It's it's good. <laughs> the treadmill thing is working. Um, I had a... Just painfully... After I recorded yesterday, um, I actually was going out for coffee with a friend of mine, but I was, at, I was already at my limit for calories for the day. I went really just to the edge yesterday. So I didn't even get a coffee because it would have put me over that little amount. I had like 27 calories left for the day. Um, and we're sitting there talking back and forth and it's, I know I'm going to be up for a few more hours and there's a place near my house where that makes really good garlic fingers. And I thought, ah, I want garlic fingers, but, and a bunch of other stuff, but I didn't. We'll go into detail on that on the weekend when I wrap things up. I, I was good. So, and it paid off. So I'm okay. Made a little bit more progress this week. Hopefully you are as well. Um, where we are right now, um, at week 25, um, if we've been f sort of following through, I mean, we're going to have some good weeks. We're going to have some bad weeks. Um, we're going to have our plateaus, 
But overall, um, we should be hovering somewhere around a weight loss of anywhere between 25 and 35, 40 pounds. So if you're in that range, we're doing well. Because we only want to lose one or two pounds a week. We don't want to go any faster than that. Um, I did lose quite a bit this week, but I think it's just because I've been just sort of that first jump of starting up with the treadmill again. Um, but in general, that's where you should be. So if you're getting to a point where you feel uh, it's just it's not going fast enough, and I'm, I'm in there with you because I feel the same way, just remember this is where we're supposed to be. Because if we start going any faster, you know, we may not stick with it. Um, we were probably at a point now where you probably could bump it up and it's going to be a little easier because you can come back to where you were without quitting because we've gotten just so far with it. But in general, that's where our weight loss should be, somewhere in there, anywhere between one and two pounds. But it took us a few weeks to get started. That's why I'm not saying it should be anywhere between 25 and 50 pounds. But um, you should be anywhere between 25, 35, maybe 40 um, at this stage. So that's still really good progress as to how far you've been going. So let me know how you are doing. Always send me stuff, send me emails, send me all your good stuff and share with other people. Tell them what they're doing or what you're doing. Tell them what they're doing. This is what you're doing. I'm not telling you what I'm doing. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. We did a lot. It's really dry, sciencey things, but at least we have a little bit more information that we can go by and say, okay, this is going to be a healthier fat than that. And even just something as simple as replacing cooking with your margarine, uh, like replacing that with olive oil or peanut oil or whatever one that you decide to do um, for a, like a vegetable cooking oil. Obviously not drowning your food in it, but just a little bit just so that it doesn't stick to the pan usually is enough because it doesn't seem to get absorbed as much as the other ones. But little changes like that are going to make a big difference in the long run. So, um, so when you start going through this week as well in your tracking, we've been trying to stick to that 30%. Um, just keep an eye out on your unsaturated fats. You can check those in my fitness pal as well. Um, what you want that to be is out of that 30%, you want about half of it, um, to be the unsaturated. So anywhere between 10 and 15% of our diet. So we would say anywhere between what's yeah, 50% and a third we'll say. So anywhere between 30 and 50% of that 30% fat should be the unsaturated ones, including the omega. I don't think it attracts omega stuff, but anyway, just to sort of keep an eye on it that way, see where things stand. You can actually go through your week last week, take a look and find out where the good is, where the bad is and stuff like that, just to give you a rough idea. And it might prompt you to sort of tweak things. If you already are at that stage, if you say, no, I just, I, I'm at that 15% with that already, then good, keep it up. And just whatever you're doing, keep going in that route because you're on the right track. For those of us that are above or below where we need to be, if you're only at 5 or 6%, chances are we need to either add in more vegetables or we need to cut back on the amount of uh, like whole milk, which I drink because the rest of the milk is horrible. Um, but if you're you know, cutting it back a little bit on there, maybe not put quite so much butter on our toast. Little things like that just to sort of get us to a good spot. And then we'll take another look at the bad stuff next week and go from there. But for this week, at least we have a little bit more information and we're good to go and we can keep going. So for right now, that's it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please poke the like button for me. And in the meantime, keep yourself warm and fuzzy and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.